In this tutorial, we will briefly introduce Material Requirements Planning, or MRP. Material Requirements Planning is a technique that processes the master production schedule for an item into time-phased requirements for the components required to produce that item. Material Requirements Planning starts with a bill of material, as shown on the screen. The bill of material shown on this screen is for making an A item. Since this is the item we sell to customers, it is considered an independent demand item. An A is made up of one B and two C's. Each C is made up of an F. Since each A requires two C's and each C requires an F, each A requires two F's as well. Each B requires a D and three E's. The screen shows the typical MRP form that you most likely have in your textbook. Gross requirements are the period by period total expected demand for the item. For an independent demand item, like an A in the earlier bill of material, these quantities come from the master production schedule. For items below the independent demand item in the bill of material, these quantities are calculated as part of the MRP planning process. For MRP problems, the master production schedule will be given. Scheduled receipts are orders that have already been placed and are due to be received in a given period. For MRP problems, any scheduled receipts will be given. Projected on hand means different things in different textbooks. For some textbooks, it is the inventory at the beginning of the period. For other textbooks, it is the inventory at the end of the period. Regardless, it is called projected on hand. Note that the beginning inventory for any period is just the ending inventory for the prior period. Net requirements are the actual amount needed each period. Net requirements do not necessarily equal gross requirements. Planned order receipts are the amounts that will be received at the beginning of the period. These may or may not be equal to net requirements. Planned order release equals planned order receipts lagged back by the appropriate lead time. The screen shows the enhanced form we will be using for these tutorials. This enhanced form is copyrighted by Ronnie Richardson, all rights reserved. There are three main enhancements. First, both the inventory at the beginning and end of each period is shown. This adds no new information since the beginning inventory in any period is just the ending inventory from the prior period. It does, however, make it easier to follow the calculations. Second, there is a column for entering the starting inventory. Third, the form is color coded. The gray areas are areas that are not used. The yellow areas are areas where data flows into the planning grid. The blue area is working calculations. These could be discarded once the grid has been completed as they have no further use. However, your instructor may not appreciate that. The orange area has the only numbers that flow out of the planning grid into other planning grids. In the next tutorial, we will see how to perform the calculations inside a single grid. In later tutorials, we will build on that to see how to complete the grid for all the components in a bill of material, how to work with multiple bills of material, and how to handle more complex conditions. These include lot sizing and safety stock. Stay tuned. If this video helped you working operations management problems, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel.